Okay, not quite done yet, but wanted to update here on my heat treat oven build. Um, built this from basically scratch in terms of the box and things. Uh, obviously purchasing electrical components and, and whatnot. Um, really following a lot of the tips and plans that were provided by uh, Redbeard Ops in his uh, oven build. Um, it is large enough to take an 18 inch long uh, knife based on the length of my opening there. Got two coils. I am running off of 220 uh, volt power, which means I can, you know, get my heat up without pulling uh, as many amps. Um, it's just kind of jerry rigged right now, but this here is a switch that will turn off and on the coils. Uh, so when the door opens, the coils go off. That's a safety safety feature. I'll make a bracket down there. Um, the box is made out of kiln uh, soft fire brick. Uh, when I fired it up, it held it held pretty good. Um, I did. I don't know where this scratch came from there, but I did get a crack that opened up here when it was at temperature, um, and then when it cooled back down, that crack closed back up. Um, also on my back panel here, this opened up. So the mortar that I used, um, that was suggested by Redbird Ops, um, it performed it performed well, but it's not it's not perfect. So I thought I might get lucky and be able to get away with just leaving this uncovered. But based on kind of where cracks and things opened up, uh, I am going to have to put some extra insulation around it, <clears throat> which I'll talk about why too for that in a minute. But did get some cracks and cracks are heat loss, and heat loss means your oven doesn't perform very well. Uh, on the control panel here, I got two switches. I'm going to label them, but the left one here turns on power to my uh, PID controller. I'm using a simple ink bird because I wasn't concerned about ramping or not. The upper is the actual temperature. The lower is the control temperature or what you're aiming for. This switch here is my uh, coil switch so I can turn the controller on. Right now it says it's at about 28 degrees because it's cold in the shop and it's set for 1700. Um, when I did a test run I actually didn't quite make it to 1700. I got up to about 1650 which 1650 you know it's hot enough to to do a lot of the knife uh, heat treat work that I want to do, but I'd rather get it up to about 2000. <clears throat> I think to get that last couple hundred degrees, I'm going to have to insulate the outside, get those cracks, you know, covered, um, and some extra, you know, just ex uh, extra protection there to make that happen. But at any stretch, uh, this, um, controller works, works really great. Um, I'll bump it down here to say, 1500 I can set it then I can turn my coil on and when it when it comes on I just got wire here I'm gonna make a latch soon when it comes on you can hear I can hear it buzzing um, which I think is pretty normal you know it's just the the current going through my my coils and now you see my my temperature starting to go up um, one thing I noticed I've got a thermocouple in here that uh, is rated for I think up to a couple thousand degrees. That thermocouple is not as accurate or responsive at lower temperatures as it is at higher ones. So um, I don't think I'm going to use this to do my like tempering because I don't think down around three four hundred degrees that that thermocouple is going to respond as I would like. So I'm going to use a separate uh, tempering oven with a similar controller setup so that I can hold my tempers. Uh, within a few degrees, you know, 375, 400, whatever, whatever I'm doing. A um, couple of things, other things to note when you're wiring these guys up. Um, you have to use special thermocouple wire to wire your controller to your thermocouple. You can see mine there on the back. Uh, if you don't do that, if you just use regular wire to hook up your thermocouple, you will not get accurate temperature values. Um, I learned that when I was just testing my controller and stuff. Uh, additionally, you can see back here, I got twisted wire. When you double up and twist the wire like that, that's the wire for my uh, uh, for my coils. Um, it lowers the resistance and then the back wire won't heat up like uh, the other stuff does. Um, obviously, that's a shock risk right now having this open, um, but uh, I leave it unplugged. And once I do my insulation covering, this will all get covered up and then 
there won't be a risk of somebody walking by it and getting electrocuted, which is good. So now you see we're coming up to about 300 degrees. And if I open this up, you can see the coils there and then they'll start to get, the glow will start to go away because the door is open. So um, I was happy my expansion and things on the door uh, didn't didn't do much, so I should be able to basically do a simple spring latch or something. I put a couple posts there that I can build that off of and that. So overall, uh, I've got maybe 500 bucks in the whole thing. The most expensive thing being the fire brick. Uh, it was like a couple 300 bucks, I think, to get that. And then $100 in the controllers and things and then odds and ends, you know, brackets and steel and and all this kind of stuff. But uh, I'm pretty excited to use it. It's going to be way better than heat treating in my forge. And uh, I think we'll work well. So thanks. Bye.